Hey guys, welcome back to Metal Tips and Tricks. My name's Dale. Today I want to talk about rust removal, particularly in the area of electrolysis rust removal. So what is electrolysis? Electrolysis is the process of using electricity and water to remove rust. And what it is, it's kind of like electroplating but in reverse. So what we have is we would have a bucket like this and we'd have steel put inside this around the rim and they call those nanodes. And those nanodes are actually attached to the positive side chargers terminal. And in the middle is your part that you want to remove the rust from. And you connect that to the negative. Now you can use just water but it's not very effective because electricity doesn't really travel through water that well. So what you want to use is something called washing soda. And washing soda is similar to baking soda but not quite um, if you take baking soda, put it in the oven for a while, I forget what it is, about 350 degrees for a couple hours, it actually changes it into washing soda, but I suggest just go to the laundry aisle. Now there are other mediums that you can put in the water that I've used very successfully. One of them is salt. It's very corrosive and kind of toxic, but it does work if you had to in a pinch. Also another one, which is kind of my favorite, is using lye. And you used to be able to buy lye in the supermarket and it was actually called Drano. And that was the way you cleaned out your drains in the old days. Well, it's not as easily accessible now, but Drano will do it really well. The other thing is it'll do is strip paint. So if you had a part that was rusty with paint on it, try using lye and seeing what happens. But the problem with lye and salt water is they're very toxic. Washing soda is not toxic. It's completely inert. So you can just dump it out in your grass. It's not going to kill it. Try that with lye or salt to see what happens. So that's the reason people don't use those other two items. But I did want you guys to know there are other alternatives. Now, when we attach, so when we mix this all up, put electricity to it, what it does, it actually takes that softer rust and pulls it away from the steel part and attach it to the nanodes. Now, I've seen a lot of videos on this, and it's kind of funny. Everybody does it in just the worst possible way. They take these nanodes, and then they clip them together with little wires, and then they clamp those nanodes and the wires to the whole thing, and it is a Frankenstein's nightmare. And I want to talk to you about a better way of doing that. I've really simplified it. The other problem with those is they're very hard to clean. They're always coming unclipped and they're very frustrating. Well, what we're going to do today is we are going to build what I call an electrolysis cage and it's very simple. Remember, electricity is lazy. It always wants to take the least path of resistance. So the more metal you can get involved in this process, the better it is. Now, I'm not saying taking a steel bucket and using that, it won't work. And the reason is, is the bucket will eventually wear out and it'll eventually, it will wear out very, very quick. And they're usually made of galvanized, which we don't want to even get involved in the galvanized process right now and what problems that'll cause. But what I've got here is a cage with a loop on the bottom and a loop on the top. And what that allows is the electricity to come in from multiple directions. Now, I don't like putting a cross on the bottom because sometimes parts, when you have them hanging, slide down inside and will end up shorting out and hitting that part. So I've found this to be the best. But remember, back to the point is electricity is lazy, so we want to help it be lazy and give it some extra surface. There's a part inside here with complex shapes this cage here seems to work really well. But now, let's say your part is like the size of this cast iron table. Well, what do you do then? Well, you think big. You get a 50 gallon barrel and build an electrolysis cage for that. Now, that's what I'm going to show you is how to set this up. Now, like I said, I used to do a lot of machine fabric or a lot of machinery reconditioning. I had 
a garbage can set up going full time outside just cleaning parts for me, cleaning that rust off. And that's what I'm going to show you is to simplify the process, make it quick and easy, and I'll actually have this on a pallet here in the shop. I've got a pallet jack. I'll be able to move it wherever I want to. Oh, I almost forgot something. One of the other reasons I've gone in with flat stock like this is it's easy to clean. As the rust is pulled away from your part, it attaches to this in large clumps along also with the washing soda. And to get this clean is not that easy. And I'm going to show you how or why I actually use this flat st stock. is because I can just take a putty knife, come around, and just scrape it off and get it working again. Because all that crust slows down the electrolysis process. So you want to be able to clean these cages often. So now let's build a cage for this 50 gallon drum. The first step in building an electrolysis chamber like this with the cage is of course prepping the barrel. And we're just going to simply take a jigsaw, cut this out, and then make the measurements we need to do to have this happen. That worked out really well. Um, there's some stuff in the bottom of this that's not exactly, well, let's just say we'll call it a science experiment that we're going to have to clean out and uh, take care of that. But boy, that cut out really well. The edge worked out well. The other thing you want to listen to, or one of the things when you're cutting this, is listen to the sound of the saw because if I would have cut into this, the pitch would have changed and it would have given me a warning to stop, back up, and reanalyze to make sure I'm using the saw correctly and getting in the right position. But as it is right here, it is perfect. Let me grab a tape measure. Now, what we're going to do is, or we need to cut two lengths to make the top ring. And we're just going to use pi r square for this. We're basically 24 feet. Pi r square is 3.14. So that's a little over six feet that we need to make this rim. Now, I'm going to cut the strips extra long. And I found that in the past that I can cut it extra long, get it in here to fit just the way I want, and then mark it, and then do the final cut. It's always worked out better for me in the past. So I'm going to go off camera. I'm going to cut the material I need for the hoops, and clean out this barrel, and get this thing set up and show you how I do it. Step three is bending the two hoops. It's very simple. I've got a machine here that's going to do it. This is from Harbor Freight. Its item number is 36790. Don't buy it. It's a piece of junk. Uh, there's a part here that looks like it's metal when you buy it. Well, as soon as you crank down on it, you find out that it is not, and it's plastic, and it breaks. There are also other alternatives to bend this. Since we're only dealing one inch wide by eighth inch thick steel, you could actually just bend it around the barrel, bend it around a tree, a fire hydrant, a bucket. I don't care. Whatever you have, it doesn't have to be that precise. But since I have this, we're going to use it. Lighten it up a little bit here. And this is simply trial and error. Even if I bend one correctly, I can put it back in at the exact same settings. And for some reason, it will not repeat. Now, I also like that this thing, they make it look like these knurled wheels are hardened. Well, if you look closely, you'll find out that they are far from being hard. Now, remember, when bending steel like this, its own weight is your enemy and you'll end up fighting it in a way that I don't want it to just because of the weight of it.
So that's fitting up really nice. Remember, you don't want to have it too tight because you got to be able to actually fit it back in and take it out. Now I want to show you one more trick. One of these is going to stick out just a little higher than the other three, and that's so I have kind of a terminal for the battery charger to connect to. And what I like to do here is I'm going to get this set up to where it's the diameter I want. Then I'm going to mark it and cut it here, leaving a one inch gap so I can just weld this piece in and it's set. The one on the bottom will actually have both ends touch and then weld the strap right onto the top of it. So it's just kind of the way I do it. You can do it whatever works for you. So after I've got this all bent and shaped into position how I want, we'll go to the welding process. The welding process of this is pretty straightforward. It's not structural. It just has to hold it together enough to allow electricity to go through. So it's pretty simple. I'm going to weld everything on the inside. And the reason I'm doing that is I want to make sure I've got this hoop fit as tight as I can without it binding. If I were to put a weld bead on the outside, that's going to change the dimension of this. And right now, this hoop barely goes around this table to do the to do the electrolysis process. So let's do some welding. The welding went really well. What's fun about welding up a cage like this is nothing technical. All it has to do is fit in the barrel because it is sacrificial. That's something I didn't mention to you is nanodes which this is basically a nano cage. Nano, nano. That came from somewhere. Well, let's not go back that way. That the cage, all it has to do is fit in there. It is sacrificial. It will eventually deteriorate and be eaten up by this process. So details doesn't matter. The only thing that matters, does it fit inside the barrel? And the answer is yes. Now, I've got it pretty tight in here. And the reason I do, it has to fit over this cast iron table that I, it has to fit over this cast iron table I talked to you about. And it's a very, very tight fit. Now, what's interesting is that table weighs in at several hundred pounds. So I have to suspend it in here. And I think you guys will like that. So what do you guys say? We fill this thing up, get it charged, drop that table in here and see what happens. Charging this up is not that difficult. It's basically pour some wash soda in there. Actually, let me change fingers. Pour some wash soda in there and fill it up with water, stir it. The other great thing is there's convection that goes on and it's not a convection of hot going to cold. It's actually gases being released off of the steel that actually bubbles and churns this up. So that's really what we're looking for. But we'll still pour some in there. I actually don't know how much to put in. I've never found that you can put too much in. I've never really had too little in there from what I can tell. We just fill it up, see what happens. Let me turn the water on. So we're gonna let that fill up. Now, a trick you need to know about is whenever you have something on a pallet jack and it's right at the door like it is here, the floor tilts, slants just a little towards the door to allow water to run off. Well, if the jack is up, you add a lot of weight to it, well, let's just say you might be chasing the pallet jack down your driveway and well, that might be kind of embarrassing. So I'm gonna let this fill up and we'll put that big honking table in here. Okay, you guys are ready to see this tabletop go inside there. Now I told you I had a little trick to get it in there. Well, you can see it here. I've got this engine hoist that I added some features to. I made it large enough to pick up a Bridgeport milling machine. And actually, it's probably strong enough to do about 3,500 to 4,000 pounds. I've lifted 4,000 pounds on it, which is 
quite a task for any engine hoist, but especially one that I built. But it's a little rusty. It's one of those great projects where you build it really quick because you need it and you're going to paint it. Yeah, that was over a year ago. And it still needs to be painted and probably will never get painted. But it's great for this because this arm will go up around 10 feet, allowing this to drop right into the barrel. So let's lift this up and bring the barrel, put it underneath. I just realized the mistake. I didn't allow for water displacement for the table to come into the barrel. Now you know if, so right here I've got the positive set to the nanode or the cage and the negative is on the part and what happens is the positive ions, positive ions, that's not the right word, the positive electrons will pull the rust out of this and honestly on a piece like this it should take about 24 hours. Now you'll know that it's working because it will start to bubble very quickly. Now with a piece this large with this much surface it may take a while, but I'm sure I will see evidence pretty soon on this thing bubbling up. And I'll bring the camera in closer so you can see it. If you look inside, you can see these little eddies starting to form. That means the process is working and doing its job. So I'll bring you back tomorrow when this is, well, got a little more work done on it. It's been brewing now for over 18 hours. And boy, does that sludge look like something you'd see in a septic tank. But if yours doesn't look this way, something is wrong. You have the battery terminals backwards, or you didn't put enough washing soda in it, something like that. So now let's pull this thing out, see how it looks, and determine what we need to do. Do we need to rotate it? Do we need to have it soak some more? I'm not exactly sure at this time, so let's find out. Remember, the larger your tank is, the more surface of steel you have, the longer this process is going to take. What I want to do now is take this all out and take a look at the cage and see how corroded it is. I can see kind of right now that it's definitely got some sludge on it that we need to get cleaned up to make sure this process is operating as efficiently as possible. Look at how much garbage has accumulated. Now you can see why I'm using flat steel for this electrolysis cage. It's because it scrapes up and cleans much easier than any other material. Eighteen hours seems to be the magic number this needs to soak. I hope you guys liked this video. If you did, please give me some thumbs up. Also, share this video. Give me some of your comments. And until next time, go out in your shop, build something cool the Metal Tips and Tricks way. Thanks. Mm -hmm.